A standing wave is a wave that vibrates in sections. It's where the wave produced gets reflected back onto itself. And because of the conditions, the length of the medium that it's in, it's allowed to vibrate in sections so that we get a standing wave pattern. So the way that works is that a wave is created. Let's say this is our wave. It goes down and then it reflects back onto itself to create a standing wave. So in this, we have these parts that are called nodes. And these are called antinodes. The antinodes where you have your greatest wave, the biggest part. And the nodes is where you almost have no amplitude whatsoever. So the nodes are the part that's tied down. If I take a rope and hold it on two ends and shake it, I can get just this. Or maybe if I'm good enough, I can get this one. Okay? Or if I have a long spring or a rope that I can shake and cause it to vibrate in sections. But we've got one wave here, one wave going out, one wave going back. So one wave will have two antennas. Now these are tied down. So when it's tied down, that forces a node there. If it's not tied down, there has to be an anti-node there. So if we're uh, having a bar, like striking a bar and getting a wave pattern. And so that bar will actually vibrate like this, where the node would actually be in the center and the ends will be anti-nodes. The boundary conditions are like this. If the wave's going into a more dense medium, then you force a node there. If the wave's going into a less dense medium, then you have an anti-node there. And so we're gonna use these properties to actually figure out the speed of sound in this room. We're gonna do a little experiment where we're gonna figure out the speed of sound in this room. Now the problem with that is the speed of sound is really fast. It's like 750 miles an hour. You're not gonna measure that with a stopwatch and a meter stick, or at least not easily. In this room, however, we're gonna use the wave properties to figure out the speed of sound in this room. And so we're gonna use standing waves. Now I know sound is a longitudinal wave, but if you graph a longitudinal wave, it looks like a transverse wave. So we're gonna represent sound as a transverse wave just so we can get a visual of this. And so one wave going out and coming back will set up a standing wave. Now it doesn't have to be one wave. Let's do this again without picking my nose. <clears throat> we're gonna do an activity where we're gonna figure out the speed of sound in this room. Now the speed of sound is really fast. It's like 750 miles an hour. We can't do that with a tape measure and a stopwatch. It's just not gonna work for us. Not in this room however, anyway. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use wave properties to help us figure out the speed of sound in this room. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use standing waves. I know sound is a longitudinal wave, but if you graph a longitudinal wave, it looks like a transverse wave. So I'm gonna re represent sound waves as a transverse wave, just so we can get a visual. So on the board up here, I've got one wave, one full wave. Goes out, reflects back onto itself to create a standing wave. If we were to measure from this point to this point, that would be the wavelength of the wave. Now for standing waves, the boundary conditions is if it's going into a more dense medium, it's tied off. It's going from air into water. Water is more dense than air. There forces a node at that point. If it goes into a less dense medium where it's more free, then it has to be an anti-node there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a ungraduated cylinder, we're going to place a PVC pipe in it and fill it full of water. And then we're going to put a sound wave in there. 
Now, when we get the right height so that we get only a specific portion of the wave trapped in there that corresponds to our boundary conditions, where there has to be a node here and an anti-node there, the simplest one will look something like this. With a node here and an anti-node here, it'll look like this. Now, if we compare that to our wave over here, it turns out that the first sound that we'll hear, the first resonance that we'll hear, will correspond to just this much of a wave. And so this would just be one-fourth of a wave. So if we can measure this distance here, let's call it L, that's one-fourth of a wave. So we multiply by four, we'll get the wavelength of that sound wave. So, and then if we take the frequency and the wavelength and multiply them together, we should get the speed of sound in this room at this temperature. This room is about 20 degrees Celsius. So the speed of sound in air is 330 plus 0.6 times degrees Celsius. So the speed of sound is 330 meters per second plus an additional 0.6 meters per second for every degree Celsius. So that's going to be our standard for the speed of sound in this room. So what I'm going to do is strike a tuning fork over this PVC pipe, raise and lower the PVC pipe until we hear a resonance where the sound gets louder then I'm going to freeze, and we're going to measure from the top of the water to the top of the PVC pipe, and that should be one quarter of the wave. And if we know that, we can figure out the wavelength of the wave, and using that in the frequency, we should be able to figure out the speed of sound in this room. We're going to do it with three different tuning forks and average the results. This is our lab setup. I've got an ungraduated cylinder that I've put a little bit of water in with some green food coloring so we can see the contrast. And this is my PVC pipe that I can use to raise and lower to hopefully find a resonance. And we're gonna measure from the top of the water to the top of the PVC pipe. The first tuning fork we're gonna use is 256, so 256 hertz. I hear it getting louder right there. So we're going to measure from the top of the water to the top of the PVC pipe. So if I can hold these still together and put the meter stick right at the top of the water, this is how much the PVC pipe is sticking out of the water. So that should be one quarter of the wave. Now we're going to try that with two other tuning forks. We're going to try another one with 480 hertz. Right there, you probably could hear that one. Now I want to try to freeze and hopefully be able to measure this from the top of the water to the top of the PVC pipe. This is the measurement for that one. Again, from the top of the wire to the top of the PVC pipe. And then we're going to try our last one, which is 320 hertz. Okay, right there. Trying to again place the meter stick at the top of the water. And this is our measurement for that tuning fork. Now that you know the length of the PVC pipe out of the water and the frequency, you should be able to figure out the speed of sound in this room for all three tuning forks.